a game until someone blows out a knee. Right, Grant? And Sable is set to do another Playboy spread. Is that in the future for this guest, Deborah? Or perhaps it's a little scarier. Is it in the future for Honky Tonk Man? Or the extremely fit and attractive Chris Pritchett today on OTR? by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. Two words. Oh, yeah. You're going to like it. This is off the record. His name is Chris Pritchett from the Anaheim Angels mid infielder. Midfielder. I'm talking soccer. I don't even hate the sport. All right. Played three years with the Vancouver Canadians as well. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Thanks. I appreciate you having me here. Great to welcome to the show a much, 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 much in-demand guest from the WWF, Deborah. Great to see you. Thanks. And I do Love being here. Do you? All right, yeah. we'll get to the issues in a moment. And he is back. It was about one year ago. And I got to say, I missed you, man. Honky Tonk Man. Ah, <laughs> look me, here. Mike. Honky Tonk Man looks real good, but I, I tell you what, I'm as nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. And because of free agency, you see the Honky Tonk Man can sit here beside Deborah. That's about the first good thing I've ever heard said about free agency on this show. Today, <laughs> everybody loves a winner, so why should it be any different in Cowtown? Unless Calgary pa passes a bylaw, you must love this team. And all week long, players have been getting busted. Should we cut some of them some slack? Or maybe cut them loose? And when David Wells was cut loose by the Yankees, he wanted revenge. He'll get that chance very soon. But first of all, hockey in Calgary, in trouble. The blame has been laid on the team for not paying the price to put a winner on the ice. And the government, as well, has received blame for not helping them pay the price. Now the blame has been shifted to the fans. Here's what Calgary Mayor Al Dewar had to say. He said, it's less what the city can do and more what the citizens can do. Get out and support the team. Go to the games. What do you think? <laughs> well, let's just have the government pay for it. How about that? Just give them the money. Keep the team there. Look, if they don't win, they can't put a good product on the ice. They're not winners anymore. Why should the fans be there? You want somebody to spend 15, 20, 30, 50 dollars? Hockey's the most expensive sport to go see out there. And if they're not, well, hey, so what? I didn't win every match I was in when I wrestled. Is that any reason for fans not to come? Hey, if they don't want to be there, they don't have to be there, Mike. See, I agree with that because Definitely, people don't want to pay all this money and go watch something boring. It's the same with, with, I'm with just, our sport. It's, it's like just you, got to, you have to be entertaining. Why should, why should the fans have to support somebody or say, here, here's my hard-earned dollars just to keep this team in this town? Hey, the owners, the ownership. <laughs> have you ever heard them guys take a pay cut? Chris, Let me ask Chris, you that. Chris, you why think it's tough to get in the back? Angels lineup. How about getting in the word here? Are tough. All right, go oh, ahead. Oh, man, you got to jump in. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that hockey is probably... I mean, I've been in Canada a little bit. My girlfriend lives Three in Three years in, in uh, Vancouver. Yeah, and I, I mean, this is the, that's the sport here, and that's what people love. Uh, it's, it's more important than baseball and football. It's their sport, and I think it'd be a shame to have uh, what's probably the national pastime of Canada leave anywhere in Canada. So, I mean, in St. Louis and there's, in Chicago, they've constantly supported uh, losers there. I mean, those are, they're just real true fans, and I think in Canada, uh, the real true fans of hockey are still here, and I think... It'd be a shame to have them move. I, but then again, so I, I think the fans have, have got to, if they want that, that sport and that team there, they're going to have to go out and, and support them. Let me mention a word to the two of you, Honky Tonk Man and Deborah. Loyalty? Anything wrong with remaining loyal to your team? For better or for worse, you go whether they win or lose, but you say, I'm a Flames fan, or I'm a Canadians fan, or an Anaheim Angels fan. What's wrong with being loyal? No, I think, I myself, you have to go with entertainment. You have to go with the entertainment. Simply your team can't win every year, though. You can be you can be as loyal as you want to be, but what I'm saying is, when it when it comes to the owners, now I'm against this ownership deal because simply because they're not loyal to anyone, brother. They will cut you at a drop of a hat, right or wrong. Oh, you're agree. gone. You're history, brother. Sure. Big contract, big signing bonus. So what? You're out of here. And see, how can you be loyal when things like that happen? And if they, if they want fan support, they have to have a lot of fan input, and I think they never get that. So then you don't blame a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. Seattle Mariners gets offered $105 million, and the word from his teammate Jay Buhner is that this guy, who's maybe the most naturally talented player in the game, is probably going to end up close to $200 million. Do so you blame a guy like that for not saying, you know what, I'll stay in the community, that I'm getting paid and that has been loyal to me and that I've developed in and that owes a lot to me and I owe a lot to them? Or do you blame them for going for the cash no matter where it is? What would you do, Chris? Well, I think that, you know, once again, it's a business. And I think that 
uh, it, it'd be great if we all could stay in Little League our whole life and, and we could follow our favorite players. And, and I remember being a fan too, and even players are fans. And, and, and even Ken Griffey is a fan of baseball. He has to be to, to be as important as he is to the game outside the, of the arena. And uh, the, the problem is that uh, TV especially has, has made New York and, and uh, Chicago and, and Baltimore, places like that, the people that can afford to pay these players. And it'd be a shame to, to see them, you know, not get what they deserve, really. Well, I just remember in the past when I was married to Steve McMichael with the Bears, I mean, he was very loyal. I mean, he never missed a game. He's in the record books for never missing a football game. And he had hey. all kinds of horrible injuries, right, that he played through? Oh, yeah, through? he played with broken ribs, never missed a game, always started every game. But, hey, they just cut him loose one day, just like, okay, you know, you're getting older, sorry, out of here. It's pro sports, All that loyalty man. is gone. It's pro sports. And not only that, you go where the job takes you, no mm -hmm. matter what it is. I mean, you know, the guys have wives, children, they have people to take care of. You, you can't just say, well, I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to stay here because I like this coach. I'm going to stay here because I like this city. Hey, all cities are the same. They all have a McDonald's. Big deal. Well, I think Ken Griffey's case, too. He's obviously made plenty of money. And so I think his, his main concern now would be to be on a team that he thinks is going to win. And I think he'd like to stay in Seattle, personally, if they get a... Uh, whatever he he wants for that team that they can be successful. But here here's the issue. Yeah, he'd like to stay in Seattle, but there's very few guys who put their money where their mouth is and say, you know what, I want to stay in Seattle. So they offer me one twenty million. Somebody else will give me more. I'm just going to make do with the one twenty and stay here and show some loyalty and maybe try to save pro sports. A guy like Peter Forsberg signs with the Colorado Avalanche for less money than he could have made, and I think that's what sports needs. Oh, they need more guys that's loyal to the uh, uh, to the front office. Is that what you're saying? No, to, loyal Puff, to the fans. Puffets. To the fans. Oh, to the fans. Yeah, oh, to the guy okay. at home. Okay, I'll stay here and I'll lose $100 million just because I like these people that come here. The only reason I like those people is because they buy the ticket. That's simple. That's, that's just how it is. It's pro sports and entertainment. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. I think it's hard to, to lump baseball together. I mean, some sports with just entertainment. I mean, it is a sport. It, it, it's entertainment as far, they call it the show, but I mean, these people are out there competing each night to win. It's not, it's not set up or something like that. So when you talk about people just going somewhere just because those fans, they don't have any loyalty to the fans, I disagree. There are some that are like that, but not all of them. There are some people in there that just want to win. Very nicely put. He's Chris Pritchett of the Anaheim Angels. She's Deborah from the WWF, and he is the honky honk, honky honk. Greatest intercontinental <laughs> champion of all time. Come on, me, Mike. I can't even spit it out, brother. The greatest international <laughs> intercontinental, intercontinental champion of all time. Intercontinental champion of all time. When OTR returns, Scotty gets picked up by the cops for drunk driving. Is he going to be tried by 12 or by the press? An athlete's rights. When we return. Off the record. Driving through the lane, he's straight and narrow. Scotty Pippen, unfortunately, last night, uh, not the case on the road. Early in the morning, on Thursday morning, Scotty Pippen allegedly was driving on the wrong side of the road in Houston after a game, went through a red light, gets pulled over, fails a field sobriety test, refuses to take uh, a breath analyzer, and gets charged with driving while under the influence. What do you do, or do you do anything at all? Does the NBA have any place in the legal process that now exists for Scotty Pippen? No. None whatsoever. Uh, simply because if you go in any NBA locker room or the training room or probably at the baseball stadium or the football stadium, they have a refrigerator there. It's full of beer. The guys drink the beer after the games are over. So he gets pulled over because he has a few beers. Was he wrong to do that? Of course. Should he get kicked out of baseball for that? Of Basketball? Of course not. Should the league do something? Why should they? The guy did his job on the court. The game's over. He's going home or he's going somewhere else. It's none of the league's business. I agree with Tonk on this one. I mean, you know, it's public perception of, of who's a bad guy and who's a good guy. And it's like everyone's doing it until someone gets caught. And I'm not, con you know, saying what he did was right. Thank God no one got hurt. You know, it's wrong to drive drunk. But, you know, two, three beers, sometimes that makes someone legally drunk. And they, they do something and they drive and they get caught. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a role model and all of a sudden he does something that we all do every night, have a couple beers before yeah. we go home. And, you know, I don't think he should be punished for that. Luckily, no one got hurt, or at least by the league anyway. I don't have to agree with all the, I mean, these two guys. I mean, I don't agree with the drinking and driving. You should never do that. But, hey, he pays his own bills. He does his own thing. So they should not get involved. Did he it. hurt the game? That's the question. Exactly. He did not hurt the game at all. Did he hurt the organization? 
Well, you can say, yeah, well, it's in his contract. He can't bring, uh, you know, some kind of uh, something against the, the team or something that looks bad for us, and then maybe he can be punished that way. Other than that, it's none of the league's business. It's nobody's business what you do okay, when you leave your Okay, would you job. say the same thing? Because in the case of Daryl Strawberry, who's had so many problems, uh, once again is in trouble on the weekend, gets caught soliciting a prostitute again, allegedly, gets caught with cocaine in his pocket, allegedly. Would you say the same thing, that it's not Major League Baseball's place, in this case, to deal with Daryl Strawberry? Does it keep him from hitting the ball? Well, that's a team decision. Running, that's throwing. a team decision, whether or not he can cut it as a player. Is it the league's decision, is it their place, to discipline a guy who they feel has acted inappropriately? Well, I think that, you know, like you said, if it, if it hurts the team, because uh, it's a business. Once again, we go back to all about dollars. If, if I'm paying someone $2 million and he's out all night and he's harming himself and he's harming the club, I have permission, I have a right to go in and, and do something about yeah, it. Yeah, but he, if he's harming himself, like if he's doing that, but then he goes to work and he's okay at work, wouldn't you say if he goes to work and he's like all screwed up, then that would be a problem? Sure. I would agree with that. But what do you, uh, does that mean that it, as long as a guy does his job, that he can do anything and the law deals with it, and the league does not deal with it. Uh, the NFL is dealing with that with Leon Lett right now, defensive lineman, and a very good one for the Dallas Cowboys. But he has tested positive for a third time for substance abuse, and that means that he faces potentially a lifetime suspension. Would the three of you say then, in keeping with what you've said already, that it's not the league's place to discipline him? I think it's not the league, it's the team's place. And, you know, these people are on TV and they're role models for kids. But at the same time, that's a personal decision. That's not the league. And they want to keep a clean image because, it, it, again, it's about money. You keep a good image and fans are going to come out and you're going to get more publicity. I, I just don't see how in, 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 in a free enterprise system, in a free country, that you can take someone's livelihood away from them and say you're banned for life. You can't play this game anymore, the game that you grew up with, the game that you love, the game that you gave so much to. They're going to take all that away from you because personally you make some mistakes when you leave the game, when you get outside the arena. That's not for the league to decide. It's not for them. Well, and then another thing, too, you know, you hear what the media tells us. And we all know the media blows things way out of proportion. I mean, they love stuff like this. And they go on and on about it, and then they change it all around, and then it's in the paper, and then they add different things to it. So a lot of time we get the information, it's all screwed up. That's, that's true. <laughs> it's allegedly all these things have happened, we don't really know. I, I remember a case a couple of years ago, I think it was uh, one of the best players, I think it was Coleman, was accused of, of rape. It was a huge Derek article Coleman, on yeah. the front page. Well, and Michael Irvin, same team as Leon Lett, and right? Three weeks, three weeks later, there was a little thing back by the <laughs> box scores in the back that said it wasn't him and that it was the oh, lady was lying. Yeah. You know, I, I just yeah. think it, it But you, know. you can certainly make a case that the media blows things out of proportion, that we report the bad news a lot okay. larger than we report the good news. Yeah. But Absolutely. the fact is people do screw up and they do things that a league and a society says are amoral and... You know what? I'm interested in your opinion because it's not something we hear a lot of. What? You're saying that that is the legal process's job to determine right or wrong, not a league's. I think it's the, le the, the legal and I think it's the, the team. If, you, if your guy is not helping you, get rid of him That's and it. let someone else It's very it. simple. It's simple. If they want to cut Leon Lett, he's gone. Just that simple. It has nothing to do with the league or banning someone from life. Hey, he could go next year, he could go this year and play for someone else. They say he can never play football. Well, okay, then he comes to Canada, he plays in the Canadian League. Do the Canadians take him in? What, what do you do? He's Interesting been question in the States, posed but by what about here? the greatest intercontinental champion in the history of intercontinents, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break on Off the Record. This is way too much fun. I love you guys, and I mean that collectively. We'll take a break. When we return, people say living well is the best revenge, but you got to figure getting nailed with a ball going 90 miles per hour is pretty good as well. we got to start televising the commercials because it gets interesting up here. All right. Playoff time in the National Hockey League. If I sound excited, there's good reason for that. As you pointed out, it's hockey, it's Canada. Here's the situation. As the Toronto Maple Leafs hit their series with the Philadelphia Flyers, you just know that the Flyers are going to run at Curtis Joseph. Last time they met, the Flyers ran at Curtis Joseph, worked them over really well. You just know that that's going to happen. Pat Quinn's already came out and made statements. If breaking the rules... Like getting in the goaltender's crease, getting in his face, and roughing him up a little bit, if elbowing him in the head even, if that will help you win. Is that okay? Yeah. 
Well, I think in any sport, I think, uh, you know, the problem is, is, is it works once or twice, and then a team knows kind of how to combat. I'm not real familiar with, with how you rough up a goalie. You are kind of explaining it to me early, earlier, but I think that, you know, once a team knows what's going to happen, and they can probably combat it, plus I guess the referees know what the other team's trying to do. But as far as the as a, the strategy of, of just kind of working in the gray area, breaking the rules, and not getting caught—that's what they're trying to do. Well, I think that that's probably that's probably pretty all right. Sports are, uh, in history, I think you've seen, especially in football, you see a team get physical with a certain uh, with quarterback or something that kind of throws them out of his game, and then you go back to that bottom line that money and, and winning. Just so win, Chris, baby. have you <laughs> Do you do you like do the cutting edge out there? I think uh, I think any athlete tries to do anything he can to to so just how do you, get an edge. How do you try to cheat? Well, <laughs> how do you push the rules? Yeah, yeah, how do you push it? How do you? Well, I think that uh, <laughs> baseball is probably not as physical a, a sport as, as other things. But I think, uh, for example, in baseball, uh, you're, you're supposed to slide straight into the base on a double play. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, but, I but I think, uh, you know, anytime a, a run is going to score or something like that, you'll see a guy go in with his feet high and, and not trying to hurt the guy, but he'll, he'll bend the rules a little bit to take that guy out to, to get a run home. Right. So the Flyers have denied that they're planning on doing anything wrong or that they have done anything wrong. David Wells, on the other hand, who pitches for the Blue Jays, has not denied the fact that he threw at a player for the Baltimore Orioles in the weekend. He drilled Albert Bell. Here's the quote. I love this quote. I could read this every day. You got to protect your own guys. I think if it's a guy who has control and he's hitting you, a couple of guys have to go down until that guy gets his control back. David Wells says, yeah, I threw at him. Cool with that? You got to send a message. The message has to be sent. It, 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 it's a physical sport. All sports are very physical. It's physically demanding. And it's not for those weak, little, soft guys that can't take it. Hey, step up to the plate, take the pitch. You see what I'm saying? Hey, these guys throw 100 balls a day since they're nine years old. They can hit anything they want. To say they lose control, no, they don't lose control. They threw it to the guy because they wanted to. The guy gets hit in hockey, somebody high sticks somebody. Is it wrong? Is it against the roots? Could be against the roots, could be wrong. That's part of the game. That's what people come to see. Now, maybe Calgary, Calgary Flames, get rid of Lanny McDonald. He's still around anyway. Get rid of Lanny <laughs> McDonald, that horrible slap shot of his. They might win some games, get a little bit physical, get some violence out there, get some blood, hurt somebody, and they could sell some tickets. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> okay, no, well, well, I'm for that, though. I like when they do a little, when they push it. Would, would, I like it, would I like it if somebody was sliding into me at second base and trying to tear me up so I couldn't play baseball anymore? No, I would not like it. Should they do it? They shouldn't do it, but it happens. Guys, there's certain things that happen that people do not know about in a guy's life. Guys are trying to do things to help the team win. David Wells was, I mean, he had no personal uh, benefit there. He hit a guy in the opposition because he thought it was better for his team. How about Wells goes into New York Friday night, his uh, first game in New York since he was dealt, right? And let's say he drills one of the New York Yankees because he said when he was traded, I'm going to pay you guys back. That's for personal gain. Honky Tonk Man, you got a problem with that? He should leave that off the field. That should be something that, take, that gets taken care of in the locker room. Now, he never said he was going to uh, do anything. I'm maybe just saying what happens lot, if he does uh, Maybe, you know, call the guy out somewhere. Uh, leave it off the field. That's really not the arena for it. But it's going to happen. You're going no soft. He's going soft. I know. I think he's right, though, again. And I'm very impressed with his baseball knowledge. I think uh, the game takes care of itself. When when uh, when someone does something wrong, taking a guy at second base, or someone hits someone else, the other pitcher takes care of that. When it's something that happened off the field, a trade or something like that, I think David Wells would rather go out and beat the Yankees rather than hurt one of their players. If you're See, physically, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they should. But from a pan, from a fan watching, I mean, I actually enjoy that when they're out there like. I like fight. the way you lowered the, the voice. Too. I actually well, enjoy it. You know, I I, like I, I've, dropped, I've dropped a couple stiff knees like on that. guys before. And, and I had one guy hit me in the, in the back of the head one night. He had me down. He was hitting me really, really hard. I said, what the heck's going on? He was mad at the guy that, about his paycheck. And he told me, he's like, I'm sorry, man. I was so <laughs> upset about, well, why are you beating me up? Go beat that guy up. You know, but things like that happen. You get carried away sometimes. But if you're physically trying to take somebody out or injure them where they can't play their sport anymore and take money away from the, out of their pocket, then that's the wrong thing to be doing. And if I, it's a part of the game and it happens, it happens. I right. think it's wrong, but it's fun to watch. Well, <laughs> I, I think in sports, too, I, I rarely see one athlete trying to hurt another one. I mean, I mean, obviously in boxing, but in baseball, I think that it's simply to get a message across and to play the game. Interesting, because boxers on this show, and we've had championship boxers on this show, have denied trying to hurt the other guy in their sport as well. They say you try to beat him, you try to point him, maybe you try to knock him down, but your ambition is not to hurt him. I've never quite understood that. 
Let us know what you think of this show. Let us know what you think of the guests and what guests you want to see. You wanted these three. You demanded these three together, and you got them. <laughs> hey, Michael, I was intrigued by male-dominated sports like hockey being discussed by an all-female panel, which was the case yesterday. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. That probably makes two days in a row. Let us know what you think of our show. There's a website or email fax number. Back to the discuss Sable and some other wrestling issues when we return. Horns up next. You know what he's got. He's got all the news of the day. The only place to get your sports news, Honky Tonk Man, is right here on the sports desk. <laughs> 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific time. It's Pat Hankin. He's not off to a great start trying to beat the Anaheim Angels, who at least for the next three minutes we really like on this show. The Angels and the Blue Jays tonight on TSN. Gord Miller and That's Hockey. Make note of the time, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. And Scott Demore on Fighting Fridays tomorrow. All right, before uh, we get to the issues of the day from the uh, wrestling, what's up with you, Honky Tonk Honky Tonk Man, I'm in town for London, Ontario tomorrow night. Uh, Canadian hardcore wrestling, then I'll be off to Vancouver for extreme Canadian wrestling. That's what I do now. I'm a free agent. I go around and do things like that. Uh, if the WWF needs me for something, they know where I am. <laughs> Deborah, speaking well, of the WWF. I'm in town. We have our show tomorrow night at the Sky That's Dome. At the Sky Dome. I think there's a few, few tickets left. And then Saturday, we're at uh, Madison Square Garden, and Sunday, we have our big pipe. Right, and you've, and you've got some dates in May as well, May 28th in Hamilton, right. uh, May 29th in Montreal, May 30th in Ottawa. That's WWF, so lots That's of good things right. coming up. All right, we know where you are tonight, okay. right? Watching WWF. All right, <laughs> Sable appeared on the cover of Playboy, right? Mm -hmm. Their largest selling issue in 15 years. Apparently, she's going to do another spread, right? Right. You guys got a problem with Sable appearing in Playboy news? I don't. No, I have no problem with it at no. all. Uh, obviously, uh, Playboy saw something very marketable there when, in, in using uh, someone from wrestling, uh, some of the ladies from, from, from wrestling. Maybe it can turn out to be something for all the ladies in wrestling. Who knows? Well, and the good thing, too, you know, whenever they promote one of us girls or whatever, we all benefit from it right. because if she can pull in more fans, that just means there's more money in our pocket. Okay, I have to ask you this question. Sure. My fans, uh, the fans of this show, your fans, not my yeah. fans, I have none, would be disgusted if I didn't ask this question. When is Honky Tonk Man going to appear nude? Everybody wants to know it. No, would you do it? I gotta see that. Would you, just a few seconds left, would you do a Playboy spread? Hey. <laughs> would hey, you do if it? the money's there, I would do it. All right. Sable, Chris Pritchett for the Anaheim Angels and Honky Tonk Man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did I call you Sable? Oh, my God. Deborah, oh, thanks so much God. for joining us. See, Michael always tries to do that. I know. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy for you.